Almost every gaming system has had a light gun peripheral. Often several. Light guns date back as far as Seberg's Rayo Light arcade shooter in 1936. And before Nintendo made video game consoles, it had its solar power Nintendo beam gun in the 1970s, which was the first commercially available home light gun produced in partnership with Sharp. While these days video games have expanded beyond violence, shooting has always been baked into gaming's DNA from the beginning. So today, we honor that legacy in the spirit of fun and shameless macho excess. A quick side note, future sharpshooters beware. The majority of these light guns generally operate by detecting light flashes, which rely on the specific refresh speed and direction of CRT screens or infrared sensors. So keep that in mind before you pick one up. Products like the Sinden light gun and Polymega's GC01 gun controllers are designed to play perfectly with modern displays. Or you can try the universal light gun converter called Light Gun Verter. Okay, so this gun looks really unique. Actually, it looks like something out of Star Trek. But it's a light phaser for the Sega Master System. And we're gonna be playing Gangster Town. H. G. The phaser has a light sensor embedded in its tip. The Master System Plus comes packaged with the phaser and a copy of Safari Hunt. Modders have gotten the phaser to work with Genesis as well, as that system's Minister gun is rather cumbersome and was poorly received overall. Oh, I could deny them from going to heaven? What is this about? And there's no reload, which is cool. Yeah, bad guys don't go to heaven. You know where they go. That's actually a lot of fun. You can even shoot at the windows, which is a nice little attention to detail. Rather interestingly, this 1986 gun peripheral for the Sega Master System never saw release in Japan, but was limited to other territories, meaning the dozen or so games developed for the Phaser were all developed outside of Japan. All right, the second game, we have Rescue Mission. You know what? Let's go with the hard mode. I'm feeling adventurous. Oh. Oh no, I shot my own guy. Okay, so I'm the guy on the rail. How did I die? Notable titles for the light phaser include Rambo 3 and Laser Ghost. Fun fact, Sega Fun and Anime Zillion features guns almost identical to the phaser. The source of countless duck hunt memes and one of the first and most successful home console light guns. The Zapper helped shift a lot of units for Nintendo as a launch product for the NES in North America in 1985. Its sleek orange and gray colors matched the palette of the NES, though from 1989, the Zapper was switched from predominantly gray to orange owing to a lawsuit alleging it was mistaken for a real weapon. All in all, 17 games will support the accessory. Of course, there's a classic duck hunt. You gotta play with some style. Oh, but things don't stop there. While Gunman is the NES port of Gunpai Yokoi's 1974 electromechanical arcade game. Yeah, that's Gunpai Yokoi as in the mastermind behind the Game Boy. Or how about your best bet among the shooting gallery game Hogan's Alley, another game with a rich arcade history and based on an actual police and military mock training ground. Oh no, I shot the lady. She looked menacing. This kind of reminds me of that Men in Black scene. The Justifier is an early 90s light gun manufactured by Konami for the console ports of their 1992 arcade title, Lethal Enforcer. Wow, right off the bat, it's amazing. I know the graphics are not so great, but it really gives it a classic retro feel to it. And I'm all for it. And the aim is perfect. By far, one of the best aims of a peripheral gun I've tried so far. Modeled on a Colt Python, but brightly colored to distinguish it as a toy. In addition to lethal enforcers, the Justifier is also compatible with a bunch of other titles, such as Corpse Killer, Crime Patrol, Who Shot Johnny Rock, and Mad Doc McCree. The follow-up to Konami's arcade light gun classic, Lethal Enforcers, the sequel switches it up, taking the action to the wild, wild west, 1873. As with the first game, shooting civilians or fellow lawmen will lose you a life and a demotion, but earn enough points 
or insert extra coins in the arcade and you'll gain bonus lives. So overall, this game is fun. It's very similar to the first one, but honestly, I I like the first one a lot more. Just a different scenery and environment, but definitely a great franchise nevertheless. Let's move on to the next gun. All right, fellas, next gun, we have the game gun. And the game is gonna be Mad Dog McCree. Oh, I got him. You better get lucky or you're gonna be dead. What? The game gun was the sole light gun produced for the 3DO interactive multiplayer system, styled after a Peacekeeper revolver. It was made by the now obsolete New Mexico-based firm American Laser Games. The company traces its roots back to the late 1980s. Their laser disc-based FMV game technology started out for police training, but was later adapted to arcades by the mid-90s. Got him. Got him. I get Are you kidding me? I got him. Their first and only hardware controller was the game gun for PC and the 3DO. But its poor accuracy and the 3DO's swift demise meant it has gone mostly forgotten. Uh, at least I'm making progress here. Guys. I got three guys. Okay. I gotta take the guy down from the horse. There's one, two, three. Horse guy's coming up. Horse guy. Got him. Oh, I made it to the next cutscene. Their games tend to follow the same simple rail shooter formula with an old western theme. Crime Patrol and Space Pirates especially sought to inject some variety with decent projection values, acting, and set design. However, the repetitive gameplay across titles saw diminishing returns. In total, 12 games supported the game gun, not only American Laser Game titles, but also Corpse Killer and Demolition Man, whose 3DO versions was completely different from other platforms versions. Do I recommend it? Probably not. The Virtual Gun known as the Stunner in North America, is the official light gun of the Sega Saturn, debuting in 1996. The Japanese models are black, the European, blue, and North American ones are red. The bright colors were due to sensitivities around violence in video games and children. The Virtual Gun is so named as it was initially created for the console port of Virtual Cop. The 3D light gun series by the famed game designer Yu Suzuki, a launch title for the Saturn, although many other titles will eventually make use of this peripheral as well. So there's three modes. We have arcade, training, and option. Let's just go straight into the arcade. The reloading's the same as the arcade. You shoot down. Everything feels pretty smooth, although the aim seems to be a little askew. It's a little off. I didn't even shoot her. Most notably, the zombie infested game House of the Dead and legendarily awful Death Crimson, a perfect example of the kusuge or shitty game genre. In fact, it has been dubbed the Emperor of Kusuge. The 1994 arcade smash Virtual Cop would have had a lasting impact on both light gun shooters and first person shooters in general by introducing advanced 3D graphics powered by the Sega Model 2 arcade chip. Everything from GoldenEye to Resident Evil owes a debt to the series. In the game, Michael Rage Hardy and his partner, James Smarty Cools, have formed a special ops force to take down criminal syndicate, Evil, and his boss, Joe Fane. The syndicate has been involved in a huge illegal gun running operation and was responsible for the death of a detective working on the case. You're out for payback. In a typical fashion, players avoid shooting hostages while taking down the enemy. A vertical appears over opponents, changing from green to yellow to orange, then red, indicating how long before the enemy will shoot. Just aim off screen or tap the A button twice on the gun and it will reload. Other weapons include an automatic gun, a shotgun, and a magnum. Wow, that was so much fun, brought back so many memories. But let's try the next game. The second entry in the Virtual Cop franchise. 
hitting the arcade in 1995 and Sega Saturn soon after. The gameplay remains similar, but bonus points are received by taking justice shots or sparing an enemy by shooting the weapon out of their hand. Additionally, three point shots can be earned by hitting the enemy three times. A new feature is being able to choose a path at a certain forks in the road, making the stages even more dynamic. The history of the franchise is studded with lore and is considered one of the best shooters to date. Let's see if I can do better this round. Oh yeah, for some reason, for this game, the, the target seems to be on point. Hmm, that's weird. So I'm guessing is probably Virtual Cop 1 had little issues. Cause this one, the aim is just 100%. One of the pillars and foundation of my childhood. I feel like I was out of the arcade again. Virtual Cop, the whole series, it's a must cop, guys. If you don't have it, try to get it. The Nintendo Super Scope dates back to 1992, the successor to the NES Zapper. Oddly, this SNES accessory is mounted over the shoulder. The scope mimics the feel of a sniper and a side button for rocket launching vibes. Unfortunately, we lost the sights, so we had to 3D print a replacement. So this scope took me eight hours of print and it looks, it looks pretty good. I mean, it's not perfect. There's a few imperfections, but I think it'll do the job. Let's put this on. Boom. Awesome. For any of you guys that want to print one as well, I have a link to the 3D print of this in the description down below. Blasterous and Laser Blazer. Let's go with Blasterous first. Oh, I messed that up. Honestly, this feels really comfortable. And the size I feel like is perfect. The Laser Blazer. You're not going to Washington, buddy. The Super Scope came bundled with the Super Scope 6, a 6-in-1 game cartridge. But like the competitor Sega Genesis and their Menacer gun, which is essentially a ripoff. Developed by Sega as an answer to SNES Super Scope, the Menacer was bundled with its own 6-in-1 cartridge of half-baked games. Pest Control, Space Station Defender, Whack Ball, Frontline, Rockman Zone, and Ready Aim Tomatoes. But the real reason to own a Minister is to play Terminator 2, the arcade game, featuring photorealistic digitized graphics and linking to the events of Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Players assume the role of a T-800 cyborg programmed to protect John and Sarah Connor. In 2021, Arcade 1UP did an officially licensed 3 4 scale re-release of the original arcade cabinet. The Minister itself takes a rocket launcher sniper idea of the Super Scope even further with a modular design. There's a pistol configuration, shoulder stock for optional added support, and removable twin sights. Also like the Super Scope, it is a wireless infrared based device requiring six batteries. The Minister was even more of a blip than the Super Scope, sporting a pitiful selection of games. The meager library of the Minister is redeemed by Body Count, an alien invasion sci-fi shooter that's definitely the best of the bunch. The GunCon, a vessel of guns and controllers, is Namco's line for PlayStation consoles. Starting with the GunCon for the original PlayStation in 1994, which is also compatible with PS2. The GC2 in 2001 for the PS2, and finally, GC3 in 2007 for PS3 coinciding with the release of Time Crisis 4, the GC's flagship series. The GC's often come bundled with whatever Time Crisis game is newest. The first GC relies on traditional light gun technology, but GC2 utilizes LED tracking. GC3 is compatible with all TVs. Namco's other Gunkon gym is the addictive Point Blank games made up of a series of WarioWare style mini games. It's a winning formula with a chaotic and wacky sense of humor. The first time Crisis was introduced to arcades by Namco in 1995. 
The series centers on the fictional International Intelligence Agency, the SSE, or Vital Situation, Swift Elimination. If Virtual Cop pioneered 3D polygons for arcade-style shooters, Time Crisis made his name with this cover system. With players able to operate a foot pedal to duck behind and emerge from cover or press the button on the side of the gun con for the console version. The time element is in the time limits that must be met to clear each area and stage. The latest mainline arcade version is Time Crisis 5, released way back in 2015 and which has never seen a console release. Numerous spin-offs have also been developed. In 1998, Time Crisis 2 utilized Namco's New System 23 board, and the PS2 version arrived in 2000 with a GunCon 2 and improved graphics. It featured two-player co-op and a Crisis Flash system, with a story focused on preventing a nuclear satellite launch. To be honest, Time Crisis 2, no other game beats it. By 2002, Time Crisis 3 was released on PS2, bundled with GunCon 2. The cover system now allowed weapon changes, and the PS2 edition had extra content. The plot involved an island invasion. Wow. Um, I might have to take back what I said earlier about Time Crisis 2. That game has more childhood memories, but... <sighs> the introduction of the gun selection really is a game changer in Time Crisis 3. In 2007, Time Crisis 4 moved to PS3 with GunCon 3. The arcade version used the PS2 engine, while the PS3 version had a new one. Until recently, the GunCon 3 was about the only gun compatible with modern TVs. The story involved biological threats. Project Titan's multi-screen return, but reviews were mixed, especially for GunCon 3 and its analog sticks. Absolutely beautiful graphics, amazing. I'm gonna play more once this video is over. That's all for this video guys. Let me know what your favorite gun profile is. Mine will have to be the Gun Con series. And if you enjoyed the video, a like and a sub to the channel will be an absolute bullseye. As always, see you next week.